Hi guys, Twitch here from Crypt Designs, and it is another stinker here today. Um, I'm going to be working on a buffet. It doesn't look very big, but it's huge. Um, it belongs to my mother, who just moved. I'll try and stop moving this around so much. Um, it belongs to my mum, who just moved up to Queensland from Tasmania, and she's actually moved in, brought a smaller house, much smaller, and this buffet is way too big for it. So she's given it to me to flip, and then I'll give the money that from the flip back to her so that she can replace it with something that fits in her house. Before I get into this, um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you want to support me and my business, which then supports my family, um, follow the link tree in the description and there are heaps of ways there that you can support me. It doesn't have to be huge. Anything is appreciated. Um, and yeah, let's get on with it. So the first thing I do when I'm starting a piece is I just start by taking off anything that doesn't need to be there. Getting rid of anything that's going all together and going into the rubbish like the tape, for example. Removing all of the hardware and um, if it's something that's pretty straightforward like this, I'd just put it all into a container or a Ziploc bag. If it's something more complicated with different parts that need to be easily identified, I'll put them into separate Ziploc bags and label everything. So this is just the self-adhesive vinyl from Bunnings uh, that you can get from the, for a roll, get a roll of it for about $5. Um, it's great stuff for an easy flip, um, but parts of it have started to lift up and it just isn't going to suit what I plan on doing with it. Next I get some Cartsamelli clean cut and put it in a bucket of hot water and go over the whole piece inside and out and then go over it again with a bucket of clean water and a clean rag to get rid of any residue. I started sanding the copper roof using sleep fungus and um, 80 bit sandpaper. Uh, it really worked really well so I was wondering why I was having so much trouble. Turns out uh, the top is waxed with furniture wax. Um, so as you can see it was building up on the sandpaper. Uh, I have done a separate video showing how I did this, um, but I basically just cleaned it using mineral taps to get off as much wax as possible and then go over it again with sandpaper and you can see the difference in how easily, how much easier the sandpaper works once you get that wax off. So I start with 80 grit sandpaper and get the bulk of the old finish off. Um, it's not necessary to go all the way down to the clean raw timber with the 80 grit. Um, I find it better to get the bulk of it off with 80 and then work up through the grits after that to get it down to the raw wood, raw surface with um, a higher grit sandpaper because I'm less likely to gouge the wood or leave swell marks in the wood that way. I'd finally gotten around to setting up my new air compressor, so I decided to take out the Katsumili PrepMate 1 air sander and give it a crack, and I was mightily impressed. There will be more videos, a more in-depth video showing how it works, and my review of it. I didn't necessarily need to use the blower on this, but I had the tools out and I wanted to play with them, so I thought I'd give it a crack. It's a simple thing, 
that I got a lot of joy out of. Now going over the whole piece with 240 grit sandpaper uh, just to smooth out the previous uh, paint job and get rid of anything on the stuck to the surface or anything like that so I've got a clean surface to put my new paint on. To do the smaller surfaces and tight spaces I'm just using my Azito PXC multi-tool with the sanding attachment and I literally just attach one of the sleek sanding discs and just cut around it. I'm going to be painting the inside of it um, and I'm using 25mm sleek tape to protect the freshly sanded shelf from getting paint on it just to save myself some work later on. When I'm taping into the corners um, I like to tear the tape so it's got a bit, bit of a beveled end on it as you'll see in a second. It just makes it so much easier to get the tape into the corner without it going over and onto the other side if that makes any sense whatsoever. Using a starting off with a 25mm sleek brush to cut in around the edges with Cartamelli primer and adhesive bond. Swapping to a 63mm sleek brush, which as you can see I've chopped the handle off. Um, you could just use the bigger brush for the entire surface, but I prefer to use a smaller brush to do the edges. I decided to try and mix my own colour. I had a particular idea in mind of what I wanted. Um, as you can see here, I did use Sage Advice in my colour mix, um, and Sailboat, and a little bit of Pine Trees, that was too dark, so I'm pretty sure I added Daisy's Milk, and some more Sailboat, too much. It was just kind of a back and forth process until I was happy with what I wanted and then I stupidly and didn't realise until I went back to edit this video um, that I actually forgot to add the sage advice into my final mix. So yeah, I, I did wonder why it actually turned out more blue than I originally wanted it. Um, if you don't want to mix this colour, try and mix this same colour. Um, sailboat is pretty close or you could just take sailboat and add some pine trees to it like I have here along with some daisies milk and just keep it relatively simple. If you want to brighten it up a bit add some anuka pool which I did end up adding to it.
So I'm using an 18mm round sleek brush to do these parts. Once I finished getting the first coat on, I decided it was too dark and decided to lighten it. Um, I added some Daisy's Milk to it and I'm pretty sure I added, this is where I added the Sage Advice to my mix. Now that I've got all my coats on, I'm just using 400 grit sandpaper and just doing a light wipe over the surface just to smooth down any lumps or bumps or anything before I go in with my top coat. I'm using um, plastic sheet covers from Sleek Brushes Australia to protect the top of the buffet while I use it as a kind of workbench to, do my, to paint my doors. So I just roll out what I need and use my scissors to cut the section off so I don't have to use the whole thing. Once I was done painting the front of the doors, I flipped them over and sanded off any overrun uh, before painting the inside of the doors. I'm going to be using Carts and Millie washed away in the colour Driftwood on the top of the buffet and the shelf in the, on the inside of the buffet. So usually I just brush my stain on and just leave it as is, uh, but I've actually just realised recently that if I brush it on and then like kind of rub it in and rub like wipe off the excess with a rag I actually get a much smoother and even finish so that's what I'm doing here just brushing it on in going in a line um, and then kind of rubbing it in with a rag it just seems to I seem to get a better finish doing it that way So now I'm using Cartamelli satin top coat over the whole piece. For the first coat I just kind of brush it on haphazardly, which in any which way, just trying to make sure I get it in all the nooks and crannies. Uh, just making sure I don't get any run over on the edges. Once I'm done the first coat I give it a light sand with 400 grit sandpaper and then go in with a second coat. Um, I find two coats is more than enough for this top coat. It does the job, it protects it and gives it a nice soft satin finish.
and it was at this point I ran out of storage on my phone without realizing it. So that was some paint on the hinges so I'm just chucked them in a pot with water, boiled the hell out of them and then taken them out and got a soft wire brush and scrubbed all the paint off before wiping them down with what's that stuff? Rubbing alcohol. I use rubbing alcohol to clean my hardware and then I'm just spraying everything with Krylon shortcuts in the colour Gold Leaf. And there you have it. I was planning on it coming out a little shade more of a green, um, which it does show up a bit more of that in person. You can see it a bit there as I get closer to it. It's just the lighting. It makes it look a lot more blue, um, but it does have a hint of green in it, which you can see in person. Um, really happy with how this turned out. The stain on the top looks absolutely bloody gorgeous. Uh, I'm really happy with it. all finished I was going to line the sides of the drawers to clean them up a bit make it look a bit neater but that became more work than I wanted it to be and I need to get this done and get on with other things um, sometimes I have to yell at myself and stop myself from doing all the extra stuff uh, before I go any further I want to say a huge thank you to those who have supported me through the buy me a coffee program so I want to thank Louise Cross Angela Emily from Reconstructing Emily, go check out her YouTube channel, she is bloody brilliant. And it's either Angela again, or a different Angela, I don't know, but either way, thank you to all of you for your support. Uh, thank you everyone for your support, every little bit counts, even if it's just sharing my videos or content, any kind of content, anything at all, I appreciate all of your support. I don't think I say it often enough, but thank you. Uh, if you're interested in any of the products that I've used on this piece today, don't forget you can find the links to each individual item in the description. I've started doing that now so that if there's something in particular you're wanting, you can just go find it in the list and it's right there for you. Um, if there's anything you're not sure about, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments or send me a message on any of my social media platforms. Uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, I'm doing, I've got a lead glass cabinet that I'm doing for a customer as well as a, another small challenge with some friends um, and I'm going to be taking delivery of a table and chairs that I will also be doing before Christmas. So, lots coming up. Thanks guys.